So in today's video, it's gonna be a little bit of a different topic. It's gonna to be about how self-doubt can literally ruin your life. And in my case, how my self-doubt literally destroyed, absolutely destroyed me, you know, my soul for the first two years of college. I'm gonna go over a few things that I went through and a few mindset shifts for the solution to your self-doubt so that for you, whether you're getting into college or you've been out of college for years, maybe you're four years old watching this, you could still benefit regardless. So without further ado, let's begin. So here's my story. I went into college after spending several years in Egypt. You know, I was born and raised here in the States, went to Egypt for seven years to get accustomed to the culture, all that stuff. And then I came back and went to college. I had a very weird mindset that won't allow me to make friends. I just wasn't able to approach women. I wasn't able to approach friends. I always had some sort of a doubt in myself whenever it came to any type of social interaction, whether again, it's with making friends or with attracting women. That self-doubt also messed with my ability to get good grades. I just went into exams and went into classes knowing that I'm pretty decent, but I kept telling myself, these straight A students, there's no way I'm anything like them. They're way more prepared than me. They're way more smarter than me. They're gonna get the job done. I just don't have what it takes. I don't have what it takes to get straight A's. I have what it takes to get like B's, maybe B pluses, but not straight A's. I don't have what it takes to attract friends into my life. And to be honest, I really don't have what it takes to attract women in my life, as far as I knew in the first two years of college. And so this cycle kept going on for such a long period of time. It messed with my head to be able to even study because I was like, what's the point? It's super hard. It messed with my ability to make good friendships because I told myself either way, they don't care. I might as well not even approach them because if I approach them, they're going to reject me and think I'm weird just because I'm different. And when it came to girls, I was just like, nah, they're probably into white guys, not really into Arab guys. I'm Arab, Middle Eastern. Uh, yeah, they're not really gonna be into you. You're just different, that's weird. And so these thoughts kept playing in my head. Remember, there wasn't that much of proof for that. You know, as far as I'm concerned, even at the time, I was a pretty good looking dude, even when I was in Egypt. But nevertheless, I still had a bunch of anxiety and self-doubt when it came to these specific things. I knew that deep down, I was a pretty smart dude, especially since, you know, I graduated high school from Egypt. My tutors always told me I'm a good, I'm a smart dude. But for some reason, I just didn't have that type of belief in myself because of other reasons that I may get into later in the video. And when it came to friends, I came to realize that the last two years in Egypt were so stressful to the point where I kind of lashed out on Egyptians because I was just like, I don't want to become friends with you guys because I'm leaving to the States anyways. I know, stupid me. So that kind of carried over to my mentality when I came here back to the States. I was just like, I'm not really gonna be able to make friends because I'm too different. And when it came to girls, I was just like, yeah, I'm not that special. But here's what actually was happening. The whole reason for all of this, it wasn't actually that big of a problem, but I made it to be a huge problem. Maybe it was a minor setback because I was coming from Egypt after spending seven years in Egypt and then going back to the States. But then I realized years later, it took me years to realize this, that I had a fundamental flaw. My fundamental flaw was the anticipation of the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen socially with girls, and with my grades. And that is exactly what happened. Let me explain. Let's first talk about with girls because a lot of you guys are actually interested in that because you know, my channel is mainly about that. I would visualize situations where there's a girl I'm interested in, I'm talking to her, and then for some weird reason, she just starts playing games. She starts not showing me any interest. She's not really giving me the time of day after she showed me she was interested at some point. So I told myself, what's the point? I remember there was this one girl, I swear to God, there was this one girl. She was a cute girl at the time. She was this Persian chick. She was in my chemistry class. I thought she was very attractive at the time. I remember talking to her this one time in like my first semester of my freshman year. I helped her with some chemistry problems. And when I was helping her with them, she was like playing with her hair. She was being friendly with me. But me, because I was dumb at the time, I didn't ask her for her number or I didn't ask her to go out, to go out on a date. I didn't do that. Instead, I was just, playing it along, playing along. And I told myself, no, you gotta know this girl well enough before you ask her out. Otherwise, she's gonna think you're weird. Stupid me, 18 year old me. And so what happened was, as the days went on, I would text her stupid things. How did you do in this class? How did you do in that class? Oh, did you uh, study? Oh, you wanna do a study group, blah, blah, blah. So I noticed she would occasionally show me interest, occasionally not, occasionally yes, occasionally no. Until I came to the conclusion that she stopped showing me interest and I kept asking myself, why is this the case? until eventually I started seeking help online 
through other coaches. Thankfully, I was broke, but thankfully I saw um, other videos of other coaches. Turns out that if a woman does that, she's just not interested. It's not even because she's playing games or doing anything stupid like that. It's because she's not interested in you. The reason why she's not interested in you after she showed you interest is because you didn't do shit about it. I didn't do shit about it. I was just sitting there asking her stupid questions when really it's a very easy and simple fix without complicating it. When are you free? When are you free to get together? When are you free for so-and-so? When are you free for coffee? When are you free for a fun idea? I have a fun idea to do with you. But no, I didn't do that. Oh yeah, how'd you do on the exam? Oh yeah, you wanna be part of a study group? So later after that, because I was not confident in myself and carrying myself around her, she lost interest. She stopped showing interest in me. And eventually she would show it on and off and on and off and on and off, on when I would be confident, off when I'm not confident, until it came to my mind that it eventually made sense. She's not interested in you because you're not showing her that you are a confident man. So later, that's what happened. And it didn't take me till a while later, like till I was 21 maybe, to finally fully grasp this after I learned this stuff. And similar things happened with other girls where like, I'd be interested in them, but I wouldn't even approach them because I was like, oh yeah, God forbid, I can't do that. Looking back in retrospect, there's nothing wrong with getting rejected. If you're interested in a girl, bro, just shoot your shot. That's what you have to learn from this. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink, oh, she's gonna think you're awkward. Fuck that. Just do you. Be vulnerable. Say, okay, I'd like to go, I like to, I have a fun idea for you. I have a fun idea for both of us. When are you free on, when are you free this week? Are you free next Thursday? Boom, surprise her. No? Okay, on to the next. Boom, that's easy. And she may even come back after you stop replying because she told you she's not free. Oh, when else are you free? Oh, I, I don't know. I have to get back to you. All right, get back to me. Then you just leave her. Boom, on to the next. So that's when it comes to women. When it comes to women, you have to take initiative and you have to indicate your interest by saying things like that and you moving the interaction forward. I have tons of other videos. I also have a course that I'll probably link in the description below uh, for those of you interested in doing these things. So that's when it comes to women. When it comes to socially, I also had the mindset, the reason why this didn't work is because I kept telling myself, yeah, you don't drink, you don't party, um, you're not like them. Maybe, oh, they're athletic, you're not that athletic. So because of that, you're probably not gonna fit in with them. And I ended up attracting the same exact thing as my stupid beliefs. Because the hardware or the software that was here, whatever, was outdated. I had to update the software to have new beliefs, to interact with new kinds of people, to do new kinds of things to benefit myself. I would see a kid that I know in one of my classes, I might occasionally say hi, and I actually didn't have bad social skills because my entire life I've been a pretty social guy. But my skills were kind of rusty and they were kind of, um, like I said, colored by fear and all these things. And so even when I would see friends, when I would see friends like sitting together, and even sometimes they'd see me, they'd be like, oh, come sit with us. I'd be like, no, I have to study, which was the truth. But instead, I should have been like, I'm actually studying right now. Let me get back to you in 20 minutes. I'll be right with you guys. And so because they saw that, it kind of had like a, like a wall around me, even though internally I was feeling the complete opposite. I wanted people to socialize with me. But because I had those fears, I wasn't able to, to get my point across the right way. So people weren't friends with me. And I kept feeling sorry for myself, crying sometimes behind the scenes. Oh God, why me? Oh God, poor thing. I absolutely hate feeling sorry for myself. I don't do that anymore. I like to think of solutions whenever I have problems. And so I would notice there was a few people who were kind of friends with me, but I just did never, I never did anything to flourish that relationship or flourish those relationships to hang out with these kids outside of school, to do a fun thing. Even if, even though I don't drink, if they drink, that's fine. I could have done other things with them. I could have even been a part of a study group. I could have went out for bowling, whatever it is, out for the, for the movies, go, to, go with them to the bar, even if I don't drink. But it, I didn't have that type of thinking. My type of thinking was too scared. It was too colored by fear. I was way too afraid of what people will think of me. I was way too anxious. They're gonna be judging me. Oh, there's gonna be hot girls there. I'm not gonna know how to talk to them. It's like, dude, it's not, that, it's not that tough. Just go up and talk to them and talk to them as if you know them forever. That's what I do right now and that's how I make tons of friendships. That's why I have a very big network right now. I'm obviously not best friends or close friends with everyone, but I still have that type of skill set because I've trained it over the years and also that's how I naturally am. Back then, I didn't have that kind of confidence in myself. I had some confidence because like I said, naturally extroverted, but still it wasn't enough for me to, to get the ball rolling and get the kind of results I wanted in my life socially. And so I ended up feeling really, really lonely for like two summers straight. I had no one to talk to. Even my cousins, they were way too busy for me. But I don't want that for you, man. I want you to learn from this. Whenever you see a group of friends, you see a couple of people from your class, and you see them in the library hanging out, join them. 
If they don't like you, honestly, screw them, dude. They're not for you. You have other people who could hang out with you. You have other groups of friends who are going to be way more interested in you than the fucking people who are not. We're giving you the cold shoulder. It's okay. Don't take rejection personally. That's one of the lessons you'll learn from this video. Do not take rejection personally. It has nothing whatsoever to do with you. Rarely. Sometimes it does. But it has nothing whatsoever to do with you. But it has to do with the other people or the other person or whatever. If a certain person or certain types of people are not the most fond of you, don't take it personally. Move on to the next. Similarly to what I said about the women, move on to the next. Just keep creating those connections, especially when you're in college, because those are when you're going to lay that kind of foundation and framework to become better in your life. And finally, when it came to grades, the whole reason why I had the problem with my grades is because I had a certain type of lack of belief in my own ability. I kept telling myself, this is way too hard. I'm not able to get an A, let's say in these classes, I'm not able to do my absolute best because I had a fucked up mindset that didn't allow me to do that. I kept telling myself at the time that, oh no, this is way too hard. You have to study for hours. After studying, you have to read the textbook. And after reading the textbook, you have to do all the problems. And after solving all the problems, you have to repeat that same cycle three times. No, it's just you have to focus in class, get the main stuff, and be smart about what questions the professor is going to ask. And ask questions during class because that's when they give you hints and be part of maybe like a study group once a week or something. Not only are you gonna lessen your study time, but you're gonna be more efficient with your time instead of just studying all the time. You're gonna know what's important, learn the main objectives from each lecture or whatever, and then kill it that way. Start, you know, having a study group, focus on the main things, study for the exam at least a week prior so that you're not stressed out or if something happens or comes up. That way, when the exam comes or when the time of the paper comes or the midterm or the final, whatever, you're prepared because you have the basics down packed. You're not just memorizing. And you have to believe that it's possible. If you, if you already have the stupid mindset that that student's smarter than you because they have some special gift or special photographic memory or whatever, or that student was genetically favored or genetically blessed, but you're not, you're already setting yourself up for failure, bro, and I don't want that for you. Instead, when you have the right mindset, and you start telling yourself that, yeah, no, this is, I'm a regular human being. I've made it this far to college, so I can definitely do this. I 100% could do this. Other people have gotten an A in this class. They're not geniuses. I could get the same thing. What did they do? Focus in class. Make a study group if you have to, because I wasn't really focusing in class and I didn't really have a study group. Do the homework that the professor tells you, even if you don't, you're not graded on the homework, because the, the questions from the exams are most likely going to be very similar to those, because that's the kind of you know, questions they like to ask. Ask questions during the lecture. Ask, ask, ask. I don't care if there's 200 other people in the classroom. Don't be shy, don't be like most people. Just even if you're scared, raise your hand and ask the question. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing, the professor might laugh at you. And even if he does, he's a jerk or she's a jerk. But anyways, that's not the point. The point is for you to grow and to have the confidence to ask the question. Pretend it's just you and the professor. Pretend there's no other students. Raise your hand and ask the question. I don't care what class it is. Most students don't even have the guts to do that. So do that, reframe your mind and keep telling yourself, this is easy. It just requires some work. Nothing is crazy hard. It just requires discipline and work and reviewing the material several times. Maybe do a few practice exams as long as you get the gist of it. And also this, don't go into a program thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be the most difficult fucking program in the world. I'm not gonna get in. They only accept one out of six applicants. Oh my goodness. If you think of that, and you keep replaying it in your mind, you're automatically setting yourself up for failure because you're thinking of the worst possible outcome. Sure, that could happen, but that only happens to the people who don't fucking study effectively. However, for you, because you're gonna study effectively, you're gonna be like, yep, I'm gonna get A's here, A's here, A's here. You may get an occasional B plus, maybe a B pushing it, but the rest, A, A minus, A, A minus, uh, B plus, A, that's it. Whether it's medical school, pharmacy school, whatever type of school you're going to, even if it's not that difficult. Worst case, you're not gonna get in the first time, no problem, just apply next year. So what, you lost one year of your life? No problem, you gained experience. Don't be like me where I was shitting my pants, oh my God, I'm not gonna make it into pharmacy school. I'm not gonna make it into pharmacy school. And guess what? I didn't make it the first time around and I had to reapply. And it's mainly because of three main things that I told you. And also because I kept fearing not getting in. I kept fearing letting my parents down. I kept fearing that they're going to be like, oh, yeah, he's not, he's, uh, he, we're not proud of him. He didn't do anything noteworthy for us to be proud of him. I don't want you to think like that, dude. I think completely differently now. It's not even funny. It's like <sighs> saying I changed a 180 
in terms of my mindset is not enough. I'm way more happier, way more confident, way more healthier. I have a way more healthier mindset. I'm way more attractive socially and to women. I believe in myself much more. I think of myself, if someone could do this, I could do this and even better. That's how you grow in life. You don't grow by doing the same thing over and over again. And you definitely don't grow by feeling sorry for yourself. You don't grow by thinking you're not good enough. You don't grow by blaming circumstances. Oh, the women are just gold diggers, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just probably you're not attractive. Maybe you have to improve your attractiveness. That's the takeaway I have from this. And dude, like I said, whether you're 40, 50 years old watching this, you could still benefit. Whether you're still 16 years old, going to be in college in the next few years, you could still benefit from this, dude. But I promise you, man, if you have a winner's mindset and you focus on solutions instead of problems, I swear, life becomes so much more clear and so much more easy. Oftentimes, we magnify problems in our lives just like I did in the past. The problem was actually this big. It wasn't that there was no problem. There was a minor setback because it came from Egypt, different type of studying, different type of people to socialize with, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I did have a minor setback, but I should have seen it as just a minor setback, not a major setback. Oh my God, I'm not gonna get into college. I'm not gonna get into pharmacy school, it's so hard. No, relax, dude, relax, it's a minor setback. I should have thought that way about myself, about my own circumstance, but I did not. But that's how you should think. You should think about looking at things as they are, not as better than they are, and not as worse than they are, but as they are. It was a minor setback. I couldn't have lied to myself and said it wasn't a setback. But at the same time, I lied to myself and I manipulated myself into making it seem like I had a huge setback. But really, it was a minor setback. Anyways, man, you get the point. I hope you benefited from the video, bro. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one, bro. Peace.